gosh, I wish I could actually tell you. <laughs> I think some of the biggest changes uh, that I've had to make is to learn how to trust people, mm. um, to learn not to be defensive, um, but to you know, receive people and without having walls up. Hey Islanders and welcome to episode 163 of the Command of Voice. Today I speak with the featured Artist of the Month for January. Please welcome Lynette Oyen. Hi, I'm Brandon Erickson and you're listening to the Camino Voice podcast where I interview local business owners, comedians, singers, and more. I dive into their backstory to find out how they got where they are, what are some of the tips for you to do the same, and find out where they are going. Tune in every week as I interview more of the people you see every day. Hey, Islanders, and welcome to another episode of the Commando Voice, where we release a new episode every Tuesday. And welcome back. Uh, this is our second podcast of the year. I hope you guys are off to a great start to a new year. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if you guys are into uh, goal setting or anything like that, but hope you, hopefully you guys are getting getting going into this next year. Uh, we have a vacation coming up here uh, real soon. Uh, I mentioned it last week, and I'll probably mention it on the next episode, too. Um, but yeah, I'll be out of the office um, for uh, uh, about 10 days. So uh, I've got this episode today, uh, and I'll be releasing one next week. But then there will be a couple weeks lagging where I don't think I have an episode. Um, but then I should be back. So don't worry. I am not gone forever. So anyways. All right. Let's jump into this. So uh, Lynette Oyen is the featured artist of the month for January of 2023. Um, and for those of you who don't remember... Um, the featured artist of the month is through the third week of January, uh, through the third, second ish, third week of um, February. So be sure to stop in to the loft during that time to see her art pieces. Um, so, anyways, I wanted to let you guys know about that. Um, so, yeah, Lynette and I uh, were able to interview, and um, we talked about kind of her art style, uh, where it originated from. Um, what she started with in art, um, but we also get into a lot of her story, her background. Um, you know, went through a lot of things as, as a young kid, and, um, and and to get to where she is now, where now she has grandkids that are um, doing very well. Uh, and um, yeah, we, we kind of got to dive into some of that stuff. Um, she's, you know, uh, spoiling a little bit. Uh, you know, she was in the foster system in and out. Um, but she was born in Arlington and then uh, ended up back in Arlington to graduate high school. So uh, went full circle, but wasn't in Arlington that, a lot of that time. So uh, we get into all of that more, how that kind of inspires her art today and how she kind of fell into this art style and why she really, really enjoys it. Um, and uh, yeah, so we get into all that and more. Again, be sure to check out her artwork here at The Loft um, if you are listening to this in January. Um, be sure to stop by and see it. Uh, it'll be here the 20, the third week in January through, um, I, like I said, second or third week in February. So anyways, without further ado, here is my conversation with Lynette Oyen. Hey Islanders and welcome to another episode of the Command of Voice. Today I'm here with the featured artist of the month in the loft for January of 2023. Welcome to the podcast, Len Lynette Oyen. Thank you. Awesome. So before we get started, tell us a little bit about Lynette. Well, I um, was born in Arlington, and um, I graduated from Arlington High School. But in between that time, I um, did a lot of traveling um, my fam with my family. Well, not with my family. My family broke up, and I was in foster homes for quite a few years. Okay. Uh, lived a little bit of time in an orphanage. Um, lived with a foster family for a year who were going to adopt me, but my dad got custody of us again. And so we just bounced around for quite a while. Wow. Okay. So then, um, so you kind of started in Arlington and ended your high school in Arlington. I thought that was kind of interesting that I was born there and then I ended up graduating from Arlington after being all over the place. Yeah. So was that all over just kind of Washington State then? No, I lived in Washington, California, North Carolina, and Virginia, Maryland. Okay. Wow. <laughs> so then, um, okay. So growing up, obviously you were really all over the place. Um, mm -hmm. What were things that were uh, interesting? What, were there things that were 
that you were interested in during that time period? I mean, obviously you're a kid, so there's a lot going on. Well, I would have to say, because we're talking about art, uh, that early on uh, in school, my brother and I both were interested in art. Okay. And we would compete with each other to see who was best. And, of course, I thought I was, and he thought he was. <laughs> so there was a little bit of time there where we um, both were interested in doing art. Um, he went on to pursue art and uh, sold a lot of his paintings and stuff and has been an encouragement to me. Mm -hmm. Very cool. So then um, as you were traveling around then and then being moved from place to place, was that something that was kind of a constant through that time period of, of art? No. No. It, it was a very chaotic and stressful existence um, until I met my husband when I was 17. Okay. Um, we married at 18. I was 18. He was 19. Wow. Okay. And you beat in, me. <laughs> <laughs> in April, we celebrated our 53rd wedding anniversary. Oh, congratulations. Yeah. That's awesome. All right. So did you guys meet in high school then? And No, we, we met at uh, Lake Goodwin. Okay. Uh, he used to do a lot of skiing and swimming there, and I had a girlfriend who was dating his best friend. Okay. And she introduced us, and that was about the end of that. Wow. <laughs> That's very cool. Yeah, we, uh, my wife and I got married. We were both uh, just 20 um, getting married. So, mm -hmm. um, I know all the statistics say you're not going to make it. <laughs> right. Yeah, I, you know, and, and I think it's so, um, I don't know. I, I don't know that there's any sort of science behind it at this point um, after seeing so many friends or family mm -hmm. or people that you've seen go through the journey of marriage and some make mm -hmm. it, some don't. And sometimes... There's not a rhyme or reason necessary. Some, some there are. Some you see and you're like, okay, that was obvious, um, one way or the other. But sometimes you're like, I don't, I don't know why that didn't continue, you know. And yeah. Well, I know for me that uh, when I got married, I didn't know how many pieces I was actually in, and they needed to all be kind of put back together again. Mm -hmm. And so my t 20s were uh, a rough time uh, because I had a lot of rage and a lot of... Um, I was very prickly, and so I really needed to uh, do a lot of healing. And so I have to say, because you, you, um, the, the person that actually helped my husband and I both, because he also was a sort of a wild hare, <laughs> <laughs> um, we gave our hearts to Christ, yeah. and we centered our life on him. Mm -hmm. And uh, through that, because he was the center of our lives, the rest of it really fell into place and made sense and we received the healing we needed and the direction we needed for developing a life together yeah yeah and did you have uh, mentors along the way then uh, within the church or within um friends? well throughout my childhood it would seem like I would end up going to uh, church with most of the families I was with uh, I've been to the Lutheran Church, the Episcopal Church, the Catholic Church, the Jehovah Witnesses, the Mormons, the Baptists. <laughs> uh, so there was always that influence in my life. Yeah. Um, so I would say no particular person. Well, I can't really say that. I have to say as an adult, when we started going to Warm Beach Community Church, mm -hmm. um, there was a pastor there. Uh, his name is Pastor Maddox. And he used to rush to the door. Uh, to greet people as or, or to say goodbye to people as they were leaving. Okay. And he would always say to me, Lynette, do you know that Jesus loves you? <laughs> and every week I would leave the church crying because it was such a, a, a heartfelt message. Mm. Um, and I needed to hear that. Yeah. Yeah. So he really impacted me just through those words. And I have to say, another person who has a real impact in my life, though I only actually visited with him maybe four times, and this is to encourage people that um, think that what you say or do doesn't matter or that it takes a long time to impact someone, um, was a social worker who became a part of my life when I was 16. Okay. And she, she actually invited me to her home for dinner one time, and um, she sent me a Christmas card every year until this year. And when I didn't get my card this year, I Googled it because I thought, she's getting older because I'm getting older. Because <laughs> I turned 70, I'm 71. So she was 10 years older than me. Okay. And so I thought, I Googled it and found out she passed away in October. Mm. And so 
I didn't get my Christmas card this year. Oh. But her continued love and acceptance and encouragement of me was a real gift in my life. Yeah, that's that's really neat. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> yeah, I just think, yeah, and you never know what thing, what piece, mm -hmm. what you say is going to, how it's going to affect someone, um, mm -hmm. positive and negative. Um, yeah, that, I think that was that's a small thing to send a card, but it's a huge thing yeah. to the person who receives it a lot of times. Yeah. And so that was always one of the things I really wanted to do was create a card line, which, uh, you know, I do have here now. Okay, yeah. And um, I, I love those little cards because um, they're heartfelt and uh, they're just a part of me. Yeah, that's great. So, um, so you, you know, you you had this journey uh, through high school. Mm -hmm. um, when you graduated and then you got married, um, at that point, what was kind of your on the horizon for you? Were you looking at college? Were you looking at just getting into work? What were you kind of looking at? Well, I managed to get through bus business college before I got married. I mean, like it was like a, a year program. So I did that not because I wanted to, but because. Um, that was something I could do. Okay. But then I actually got married, stayed home with my kids until um, they were probably in junior high. And then I went back to school for two years, um, got my associate's degree, thinking that I would get a degree in uh, the area of counseling. Okay. Um, because I had had some counseling when I was younger, and it really helped me to get out of a hole. And I thought, you know, that was something that to me seemed like it would be, um, well, it's, it's so, to teach people how to take tools, because there's no real magic. It's about learning how to live your life and taking tools and using them in your life mm -hmm. and doing the work you need to do to create a life is something that a lot of people don't know how to do. Yeah. And so that, that's why I think counseling is such an important thing and why I actually wanted to do that because I wanted to help people put the pieces together and be able to get out of the holes that they find themselves in. Um, mm -hmm. But I didn't complete that. I, I stopped. Uh, one of the things that... Um, I think, you know, it was a lot of fear and a lack of confidence that kept me from pursuing that mm -hmm. further. And also, I kind of felt like, well, are you playing God? I mean, it, it just, it just I, I don't know. For, I stopped at that point. And um, one of the things that I have done, my husband and I have done with our lives is we've been foster parents. Okay. And uh, to teenage kids. Yeah. Well, uh, to begin with, they, began to, they found us. And then we became a part of burden bearers and a part of the state um, for teenagers for a period of time. Very cool. And then I went to work um, at the news office in Stanwood for four years. Okay. And then I went from there to Whitehorse Family Medicine in Arlington. Okay. And worked for 26 years until I retired. Wow. Okay. Very cool. Um, yeah. I want to touch on the, the counseling piece because, mm -hmm. um, you know, I've done counseling. Um, I actually actively continue to do so. Um, because I think it's a, a good check-in um, for people. Um, you know, I think it, it is. It can be price prohibitive for people because it is expensive. Mm -hmm. um, but I do think there's you get so much out of it um, mm -hmm. by having that. But I was curious from you, for you, um, what are some of the tools and things that helped you um, as you've continued to grow in your life? Gosh, I wish I could actually tell you. <laughs> I think some of the biggest changes uh, that I've had to make is to learn how to trust people, mm -hmm. um, to learn not to be defensive, um, but to, you know, receive people and without having walls up. Yeah. And I think those are things that uh, you learn as you allow yourself to. Yeah. So in the putting walls up... It makes perfect sense from from what your your past was mm -hmm. were there steps that you deliberately took to help start breaking those down well i would have to say the biggest thing for me is that i actually because of my need 
um, really pursued the Word of God. Mm -hmm. And I built my life on um, the words that I read there. I yeah. didn't just listen to them and hear them. I actually tried to live them out. And I still, that is my heart now, is to live out my faith. And God's Word has a lot to say about how to live in the world and yeah. how to relate to people and um, how to love people. Yeah. And so I would say, really, uh, if, you, if you spent time reading the whole New Testament, you would have a, a real solid idea of how to walk in your life with your spouse and with your kids. And I remember my son was a bit of a rebel. <laughs> and uh, I ended up on my knees. <clears throat> And I, I was praying to God, what, what, what can I do and how can I, how can I love this, this rotten kid? <laughs> <laughs> and I felt like the Lord spoke to me, how do I love you? Mm. And, I, and I just really thought about that. And I thought, well, you accept me. Um, you're here with me. You forgive me. Uh, you, you are never going to let me go. Um, but just in, in uh, thinking that through in my prayer, it gave me a, a different picture of how I should parent my children. Mm. And up to that point, I really hadn't thought too much about it. I thought, you know, I was a grown-up. I knew how to parent. Um, but actually, I really didn't. And I'm so grateful that both of my kids, who are now uh, in their middle years, <laughs> yeah. are doing great and are great people. Yeah. And they've taught me a lot. Yeah. Very cool. Um, so then when did art kind of re... You mentioned that it, you did a little bit of that in school growing up. When did art kind of reintroduce itself into your life? Well, I started taking um, a class uh, when my son was in high school. Um, but it was... My brother had done photo journal, the photo, photographic type art. Okay. Um, and so that influenced me and he was going to a specific teacher I can't even remember his name now and so I decided that I'd take some classes from him too and it's so awesome to create something that was just so perfect and uh, from there I actually ended up with a different instructor that I went to for a while up in Mount Vernon and I did some actually I would even say beautiful pieces and but it took Every little piece on the painting would take hours. Like I might spend three hours on a piece that was just a few inches to get okay. it just exactly perfect. Yeah. And so it would take months to do one painting. Yep. So I, um, when I got a job and I was working uh, 10 hours a day, I just didn't have the energy yeah. anymore to um, do any kind of artwork. Uh, and when I was home, I had, you know, all the other jobs yes. to do. Yes. And so I didn't really get back to it until about 12 years ago. And at that time, I I had come across uh, Tama Laporte, who is Lifebook. She okay. has a site called Lifebook. Uh, and it seemed interesting. And she had some, um, uh, you know, things that you could try out. And so I, I did a couple of paintings with her. And I really liked what she was doing, and it just kind of captured me. And I decided, you know, I think I want to do this. So I contacted a couple of uh, friends, and I said, would you like to do this with me? Mm -hmm. And they all said yes. And so I bought into the life book, and we get together on Fridays to do artwork. And so I think it's 12 years ago now we started doing wow. that. Okay. And so through that... <laughs> It was a mixed media class, and it, it required every uh, utensil known to man, I think. <laughs> so, so, and, and so we all have spent hundreds of dollars, I think, probably in collecting art supplies, which, of yep. course, we love actually to buy the supplies. Yes, yeah. But um, that was actually how I got, I started doing what I'm doing now, and because I fell in love with it. Yeah. And really enjoyed it, and, and I don't have the patience that I had in the past. In fact, I, I will be listening to a teacher, and before I know it, I'm not listening anymore. And I'm just <laughs> doing my own thing. So um, I've kind of lost the ability to, you know, be taught, I guess. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, so you said it's mixed media. Um, 
what, as you were going through it, what were the ones that really stood out to you as, as pieces that you really enjoyed working with? Well, I got stuck on faces. Okay. Um, and, and so I really loved the whimsical um, the girls, and that's where I, I kind of got stuck, and when I try to move past it, I keep coming back to it because I, I love it. Yeah. So, uh, and it's so funny because I was just telling my husband the other day that, you know, I was doing a face... And I, I said, as many times as I've done this, you would think I would know what colors to mix. But every time, it's like something new. Like, I'm doing it all for the very first time. And um, it's just a matter of just continuing on each layer until you get the what you're actually looking for. So it actually takes quite a lot of time, even though they look like very simple paintings. Right. So, yeah. so what was it about the whimsical side that, that really drew you in? Or still does. Well, I think, bottom line is, I'm, I'm really not into art. <laughs> I'm into, I, I've always used my art to make gifts. I've always used it to, uh, like, make bookmarks and uh, presents for people. And um, I was a part of a, a Bible study, and I, so I would make a bookmark for every Bible study that we did. Um, we had gifts each week, so I would make a I wouldn't use one of my paintings as a gift to give to someone. So I would say what's more important to me is um, creating what I would call a message board. So I see my art as a message board. Okay. I, I, the art itself is there, but it's the message that I'm trying to project. I want it to, to be on someone's wall, and I want them to, when they see it, to be encouraged, to be lifted up, to just, sometimes, you know, you just are going along and you see a word, and that word can just remind you to lift up your thoughts and your mind. Yeah. And um, so I guess that's my goal and in, yeah. in what I'm doing and why I do it. Yeah. So it isn't really about so much even being an artist as it is about wanting to send out a message into the world that that creates uh, a sense of peace and calmness and love. Yeah. So when you're, you're doing these pieces then, um, are you, so th that's one of my questions is that you have a lot of um, messages and stuff in your paintings. Mm -hmm. When you're doing these paintings, do the messages come after? Do they come before? Like where you were doing the painting with an, a message and thought or how's that kind of work for you? Most of the time it's after I do it and I'm, I, when she's finished, I will, like, look at her for days and maybe try to, you know, um, you know, just try to come up with what I think would be um, good for this particular piece. Um, there have been some times when I've had the specific messages. In fact, I, I, did, I jotted that down because I wanted to share it. I, one of the messages that I got that I really love is joy and sorrow live next door to each other and love lights the path between because I was kind of wrestling with that whole you know the suffering and also joy and and how we hurt in our lives and yet at the same time how we have so many things that are uh that we are joyful and happy about and how do you put all of that together in one heart yeah and I thought, well, it's like houses. You have a little house that's sorrow and a little house that's joy. And there's a little path between. And I actually did a painting of it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, and so you can, you can visit over here in sorrow, but you don't want to live there or stay there. And so you walk back across that path into the house of joy and live there. Yeah. But we don't, we're not always happy or joyful. Um, so... But I, to me, that's a reminder, too, that we don't have to live in sorrow yeah. or sadness, but yeah. that we can choose to live in joy. Right. Well, and that we live, as humans, we have, mm -hmm. we always will have both. We, we mm -hmm. go through those times um, of both of those. Mm -hmm. so. Well, and I just recently, the last painting that I, I sold, um, it, was, it was special to me because it was a picture of myself and my sister that I painted. And uh, the words that I had, because I actually had painted it before for my sister, and then I repainted it. But the words that I had is, God holds our hands in the deepest forest in the darkest night. 
And I thought when I put it out for sale, whoever buys this um, is going to relate to it somehow. Yeah. You know, because it was actually a very personal, I mean, though, it, you know, it didn't, it was telling a story. Yeah. Even though the story wasn't told. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was a picture of my story. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, um, yeah, it's just, I think until you go through those times, mm -hmm. it's sometimes it's hard to, to relate to them. Um, and I think mm -hmm. it's also, you know, I, there's different times where like you listen to different songs or things like that, where like, it's, it's interesting that like sometimes when you're really sad or like mm -hmm. in that kind of sorrow point is when you're also going to listen to songs that are more mournful or sad because mm -hmm. um, you have to you have to work through it um, and you don't want to hear an upbeat exciting happy song and it's kind of the same with painting you there's times where you go through those times and you're going to relate more to those paintings and you're also even when you begin to come out of that time period you don't ever want to forget what you went through and forget that that journey in that song yes very cool. So, um, uh, from switching from what you were doing with the photorealism style mm -hmm. of painting and stuff, um, have you felt like now when you do painting and stuff like that, that you're just able to express whatever it is in that moment or that time? I really enjoy painting. Yeah. I, I enjoy the process of painting. Um, the other thing that I would say about my artwork um, having my art group, um, talking about influential people, but having people who actually have faithfully shown up on a Friday for 12 years yeah. <laughs> is pretty amazing to me. And I have to say, because I like to share uh, whatever it is that I'm doing. If I'm reading a book, I'll be sharing it. If I'm, you know, I, I just, if I can't keep something good to myself. And so I love the fact that I get to share with people because again that to me is what my what art is about it's about com um, coming together and having community and um, just sharing life and so that's a big part of um, the last few years that yeah. have made my um, life uh, filled with joy yeah very cool so tell us about the pieces that you're planning on bringing to the lock then well, um, I was looking at them. It's birds and flowers and girls. <laughs> and they're all saying something nice. <laughs> nice. Cool. I did, I did, I do have a couple of pieces that are a little different because I, I signed up for uh, Krillick University. Really? Okay. I did, and I, but I never really got to the meat of Krillick University because before that I had purchased two um, miniatures, miniature classes, one from Diana Shine and one from Jed Dorsey. Yeah. And so I was a little overwhelmed because I kind of went nuts. Yeah. And uh, so I did 25 of the miniatures of Jed and 25 of the miniatures from Diana and the rest of them are just sitting out there uh, because honestly, I'm not a landscape person. Yeah. And, uh, but I, I mean, I learned a lot yeah. of really good things um, from them. And also, you know, I'm never going to be like free <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and not do tight things because that's not, it, it's just not who I am. Yeah. I have absolutely no desire to do a landscape. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, especially after you're, you're learning about your history of mm -hmm. trying to do those with some other things, it's like. Well, what I love about, I mean, Acrylic University is awesome. Yeah. And uh, I'm really looking forward to actually having a time when I start really looking at the, their various uh, uh, pieces, like doing clouds and, and, uh, their, and the colors, how all, all the colors work together. And just there's so much to learn. And um, like I said, I'm not a very good student. So. Yeah. The, uh, the, the great thing at Acrylic University... Um, uh, Jed, he used to do the paint and uh, coffee and canvas classes up here in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. And so I would get to hear him as he was teaching and stuff. And he's just such a great positive teacher mm -hmm. uh, when he's working with people. And, yeah, they um, both are. And their work is beautiful. Yeah. And so it was really neat to, um, I'm sure that each of those classes is just a lot of fun to go through because he's a yeah. fun person to, to learn from. 
Very cool. So, all right. Well, I like to end every podcast with some rapid fire questions. So the first one is, what purchase of $100 or less have you enjoyed the most in the last three months? Well, um, I had my nails done. Uh, yep. I did a French manicure, manicure, and that made me real happy because, nice. because I don't have very good nails, and they look, so then my hands look pretty for a while. Yes. And uh, other than that, taking girlfriends out to lunch is probably, I'm not much of a shopper, I would say. Yeah. <laughs> No, that's great. Um, yeah, my wife was, has been doing, uh, has done her nails a few times. And, like, the process of, like, once they're done, it's almost more expensive to get them removed and finished up then. Well, I'm about ready to get them taken off <laughs> because, I, you know, I, I just can't. It, it, it takes a lot of time. And I do like l- looking at how pretty they are, but I think I'm going to go back to my natural ones. <laughs> but I did enjoy it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That's a fun experience, at least. Uh-huh. All right. Uh, who is the most influential person outside of your family in your life? Wow. I would have to, like, break it into categories in order to, <laughs> to, to do that because I feel like I've had a lot of people that have influenced me. I think we talked about that early on. Yeah. Um, you know, because my pastor really influenced me. My social worker really influenced me. I think in church, um, my friend Michelle Anderson is the one who has encouraged me and been a big, you know, pushed me forward. And I would have to say, as far as art goes, it's Lydia. Yeah. Lydia has really, um, you know, uh, helped me and invited me. And um, so those are all people that have been a big part of influencing me. Yeah. Very cool. And yeah, just quick shout out to Lydia. She is fantastic and she does... Uh, organizes the whole loft and everything, mm-hmm. and um, yeah, just always an inviting personality. Well, actually, it was really kind of exciting because I uh, have never put my work out to sell. Okay. And like I said, I usually used it for gifts, and it was the day after my 70th birthday that Lydia sent me a message, and she'd seen my picture on Facebook, and she invited me to bring my art to the loft. Yeah. So it was like a, uh, a gift. It was a, a gift that came from Lydia and I think also from God yeah. that says, I see you as an artist. And um, she gave me the opportunity to bring my work. And then it was just awesome to see that there were people who loved my work and that were, you know, wanted to have it in their home. Yeah, that's awesome. Very cool. All right. This is a fill in the blank question. It's, I know this is weird, but I've always wanted to blank. Well, I don't know how weird it is, but I think I already said I, I would have wanted to be a mental health counselor. Yeah. And if I could rewind my life, I would have pers- continued to pursue my um, education and I would have become one. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, I don't think that you're ever too late to, to do things. And mm-hmm. you have even more years of experience now. I have my, all my, a lot of my friends say, uh, I think I'll take a walk with Lynette and get my counseling session, session in. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe you're already fulfilling that in a different I way. I am, just like with my art. It's all free. <laughs> yes. All right. Uh, who is an interesting or fascinating person that I should interview next? I would have to say Carol Cox. Okay. Because she is an amaz- amazing artist. She does. I know she has jewelry here in, at the loft, and she had pottery here at the loft. And okay, yeah. I know that she paints because she used to be a part of my painting, Friday painting group. Okay. Then she decided she wanted to get more into pottery, and so she moved on. Nice. Very so. cool. All right. And lastly, what piece of advice would you give your 20-year-old self? Um, I would, I guess I would tell myself that it's good to have goals and to act on them. Don't wait for life to happen to you. Mm-hmm. Pursue your life. Yeah. Um, I think that would be probably what I would, because I think I just waited for life to happen. I thought it was going to somehow fall in my lap. I didn't know because yeah. I hadn't been trained. Yeah. It's so fun to see my grandkids now because they're being trained to think. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> about life and about what you want and about where you want to be and what it takes to get there. And, you know, so those were things that I, I didn't talk about tools. Those were tools I did not have. Yeah. <laughs> and those yeah. are very practical, but there are a lot of people who grew up without having those. Yes. And don't know what the process is yeah. or what steps you need to take. Yeah. Yeah. And, and just um, to look back at what, 
your life is and what you've done so far, um, you you and your husband broke that cycle and you've given them your kids that and then they're able to do their kids and and my parents did the same thing with with me and my sister Mm -hmm. um especially my mom's side of the family um just a lot of things and um you know that those your kids and then your grandkids you know my kids they don't know realize the gift they've been given by their grandparents Um, yes that's that i mean that is really true it's like you you're glad that they don't understand in some mm-hmm. ways, and yet, uh, and yet, I think you lose some things along the way too. Yeah. Um, because life is so much easier, and and you know, I wouldn't want it any other way. Yeah. Um, but I, so I'm glad that that uh, we were able to break that cycle, and we've had an amazing life, uh, and we have children that we're very proud of, and grandchildren that are amazing, and. And uh, I was just really grateful. Um, I've learned as much, from, I think, from, probably from uh, my kids as what they ever learned from me. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Well, thank you so much for joining me on the podcast today. Yeah, thank you for having me. Yeah. And Islanders, I will talk to you on the next one. Well, a big thank you to Lynette Oyen for joining me on the podcast today. And thank you for listening. If you haven't already, be sure to rate, review, and subscribe to our podcast on your favorite podcast platform. It really helps us be found by other Islanders like yourself. And for more information on this episode, you can go to commandocommons.com slash podcast. That's commandocommons.com slash podcast. Thanks for listening and see you next time.